Welcome to Night Free Formula, lovelies. Um, thank you for joining me. So today's episode is about what you need to know before contacting the new supplier. Um, before I start though, just quickly, can you please like the video if you like it, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any upcoming episodes, and if you've got anything to say, leave it in the comments. Right, lovely, let's get down to it. So, uh, I've got some notes also, so I'm looking down, that's what I'm doing. So, um, the question, should I uh, contact the new supplier, comes up a lot. People feel compelled to talk to the new supplier, whether it's to warn them of the bad behaviour, um, or of disease, um, or for some who've been put in the kind of, you know, um, three-way kind of situation, it's to warn them off or to, um, to tell them to, you know, to back off. Um, now, I kind of agree, I've got to say, I do agree with the, the common um, belief that, you know, we shouldn't contact them. Um, and I'll tell you why. It's not anything to do with them. It's more to do with you. Um, when I go through these kind of four things that the narcissist will have told them about you, I think you'll start to see why we don't want to go talking to the new supplier. So the first thing that he is going to have told her, um, and just quickly, you know, he may have said all of these things. He may have said a combination of these things. He may have really changed it up and added some stuff too. But these are the kind of main themes that he'll be telling her. The first thing is that you are crazy and dangerous. So this poor woman is literally nervous. She's scared of you. You know, every time she hears about you, you know, it's some terrible story about how you did something so dangerous. So imagine her fear when you start to approach her after work in the car park, you know, and you're walking across the car park, waving her down. I mean, can you imagine how terrifying that would be? fumbling around in her bag trying to get her keys to get into the car real fast or if you approach her at a bar or a club or a pub or if you you know even at the supermarket no matter where you approach her if she thinks you are crazy and dangerous she is going to be scared so even if you manage to have a conversation with her and she goes uh-huh uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay okay thank you to everything you say it doesn't mean any of it got actually absorbed you know, you can't just approach someone um, just because you want to tell them something. You know, that's not how it works, ever. All right, so the next thing he would have told her is that you are desperate and obsessed. Okay, obsessed with their new relationship, obsessed with her. You know, so it doesn't matter whether you call her, text her, contact her, run into her, no matter how you contact her, it's always going to come off as though you can't, you know, you're just thinking about them all the time. You can't stop thinking about them. You're obsessed, you know. So it's not um, a good look per se. Um, it's also makes you look, you know, like you're stalking her. So, for example, if you do just run into her at the supermarket and think to yourself, right, that's it. You know, I'm going to tell her, right, she's here now. I'm going to just tell her, right, and you start to try and talk to her at the supermarket. She's going to be like, oh my God, this woman is following me. She's stalking me. You know, she's at the supermarket trying to talk to me. Everywhere I turn, I see her. You know, because you don't know. She might be seeing you places as well. Just because you're not seeing her doesn't mean she's not seeing you. If you frequent the same places, there is a possibility that she's seeing you. You know, so now when you're trying to talk to her, it's actually, you know, because she's being told that you're dangerous and crazy and that you're obsessed. You know, she's scared. She feels under threat. She's not going to listen to what anything that comes out of your mouth. Not a word. All right. Number four, you're a pathological liar. He has told her time and time again that everything you say is a lie, that the whole relationship was destroyed because of you and you're lying. He's such a good bloke. He's such an honest, you know, family man, loyal, loyal to the bone, you know. Um, he's just such a top bloke and you just lied and lied and lied and you destroyed him and you crushed his little heart, you know. So she sees you as a bad person who's damaged her new love and... You're a liar, you know? You don't even know you're a liar because you're pathological. So in that situation, anything you say to her, she won't believe a word of it, not a word. She could sit there and nod while she's 
fumbling, getting that phone, trying to dial for the police. It doesn't mean she's believing a word you say. It just makes you look a little bit unhinged, if I'm honest. All right, so number four. This is a good one. Um, <laughs> that's what my ex is saying right now, that, that you don't know, you didn't know what you had until you lost it, right? Which is... You know, that's a great kind of concept in theory. But essentially what it does is it puts the two of you, it pits the two of you against each other as competitors because now you're trying to get him back. You know, in her mind, you're trying to get him back. So in her mind, she's thinking that everything you say is just a deliberate ploy to break them up so that you can have him back. Because, you know, you didn't know what you had until you lost it. So, I mean, these are the things that he is saying to her. And it doesn't matter if you text her um, or if you see her in person. No matter how you do it, it's you're going to look unhinged. And the other thing you've got to remember also, with texting, because you can't see any kind of facial mannerism, mannerisms, social cues, tone of voice, any of that stuff... You know, he, she will probably, if you texted her or emailed her, she would probably show him because he'll ask, oh, show me, what did she say? You know, and then he would reread it, you know, put his little spin on it, change the tone of voice. So what might have been just, you know, you saying, you know, um, I know you don't want to talk, don't want to hear from me, but I, um, I really want to talk to you becomes... I know that you don't want to talk to me, but I really need to talk to you. you know, it puts a bitchy spin on it. puts a, a nastiness that wasn't intended. You know, he will spin the narrative. He will change it up. He will use your words against you just by putting a little slight inflection, tone of voice. And the thing is, she doesn't know you. She doesn't know how you communicate. She doesn't know anything about you other than your other than that you are crazy, desperate, obsessed, and that you didn't know what you had until you lost it. So, anyhow, um, and as I said, you know, and if you do it in person, it, there is so many ways that that could go bad. Um, you know, it could literally end in a physical altercation. You could be arrested for harassing and stalking. You just don't know how it's going to play out. But essentially, at the you know, underneath all of this, is that all of this stuff is going to affect you because you will see yourself through another person's eyes. When you approach her and she starts treating you like you're a crazy person, God damn it, you're going to start feeling crazy. You know, the more someone doesn't believe you, the more you feel like you need um, them to believe you, to validate you. So the more des desperate you become, like, please believe me what I'm saying. I know it sounds crazy, but it's real. So it's catch-22 and it's a vicious cycle. And the reality is that sh you don't need her validation. You don't need her to see that he is a bad guy. You know, you know he is a bad guy. You are enough. Your own belief is enough. You don't need a second person. You don't need a second opinion on this. You know, it is what it is and you know what it is. She doesn't know because she's just a new person you know, who hasn't found out yet, but she will. And the other thing is, she is not your responsibility. You know, because some people say, you know, oh, but, you know, I'd never forgive myself if she caught STD from him or, you know, or if he does the same thing to her. And there's two things. One, there is a world full of bad crap happening as we speak right now. You know, rainforest is being ripped up baby animals being clubbed to death for their skins, um, genocide occurring, children having their hands cut off by warlords. There's bad stuff happening in the world, right? We don't have to, um, all we, sorry, I'll rephrase. What makes any of that different to this or the other way around? What makes this any different to that? I mean, why don't we feel kind of um, compelled to go out and right all the wrongs in the world? No, I think it's because secretly, you know, we don't want him to have his happy ending. You know, and rightfully so. Sure, of course we don't. And the good thing is, he's not. It's always going to fall apart. You need to know that. 
right? But I think that's probably one of the kind of um, compelling factors. The thing is, we aren't responsible for another adult's behavior. This woman, just like you, has grown up in the era of HIV. We have had um, HIV campaigns and awareness since the 80s, the mid 80s. Okay, so if she is not taking responsibility for her own health, safety and well-being, that is on her. That is not your responsibility. You need to stay focused on yourself and stay in your own lane. You know, this, you know, your life and your healing is what's at stake here. Her reality, her experience with him, their situationship, none of your business. Nothing to do with you. And so, as I said, no matter how you try and justify it, it's not going to look good. She's not going to listen. The, and, and in fact, it may even cement their situationship because, you know, now they've got a common enemy. Now, um, now she thinks that she's got something worth fighting for. Because look at this crazy woman. Like, she's just losing her shit over here, you know, because she lost him. God, he must be such a good man, you know. So that's cementing their situationship if you really want you know the best thing to happen is stay away from him focus on your own healing they will do the cycle they will end up you know you know how it goes idolize devalue discard that's what's going to happen for her um and as for him same thing again he's just going to have another empty relationship where he's never satisfied where he's never ever happy where he's always looking thinking the grass is greener um, until he finds someone to replace her so that's what's going to happen there you need to just focus on you and know that you don't need to um, be validated by her you know what happened okay you know what happened you don't need another person to tell you he's a bad guy right he's a bad guy there you go i said it for you all right lovelies thank you for watching um as i said before please remember to like and subscribe and um if anyone wants a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me um the link will be in the description box i've got a few um time slots open and what else um i think that's about it guys nice to speak to you and i'll speak to you not tomorrow but day after